We're here to increase their freedom. And we're here standing in compassion. Not only recognizing that they are in despair when they come here, but recognizing, of course, the despair that accompanies so many who have left here, have left their babies behind in the dumpsters, and begin a lifetime of regret. On our way over, David and I were talking about the, the Silent No More awareness campaign and all throughout the country how at the 40 days vigils and elsewhere, these men and women who have lost their children to abortion, who have gone through the pain and who have gone through a measure of healing, be themselves become the sign to our society. The sign that so many have, and they themselves ignored, but now they become the sign to the rest of society that this is not the solution. This is not the solution to a, an individual's problems, a family's problems, or a nation's problems. And the movement of those who are saying with louder and louder voices, I regret my abortion, is a movement that takes the ground out from the pro-aborts that they've been standing for decades on the ground that this is, you know, whether this is the killing of a child or not, it's good for women. And when they hijacked the feminist movement, the pro-abortion people said, well, listen to the voices of women. That's what we need to do. Listen to women. And now the irony is when they listen to the voices of those women, they are hearing voices of regret for those abortions. Great things are happening in this movement. Reawakening is happening. Consciences are being stirred. People are being mobilized. Those who have been healed are coming out in greater numbers than ever. Those who are survivors and are aware that they're survivors, our young people, are coming out for this movement. And it's not just because they're young that we have hope. It's not just because they're filled with energy that we can have confidence that this movement is, is moving towards victory. But it's also because of the reason why they're coming out. You ask young people why they're involved in the movement. What do they say most of the time? It could have been me. It's one thing for you and me to say, the unborn child should be protected. But when someone who was conceived after Roe v. Wade stands up and says that, what they're also saying is, I should have been protected when I was unborn. Because the law said that I was not a person, that I was not worthy of protection. You realize what a motivation that is? to fight against abortion. They're not only speaking up for their unborn brothers and sisters, they're speaking up for themselves. And that is a powerful motivation that the other side can do nothing to stop. You know, pro-life forces try to hold on to the White House, try to hold on to the Congress, try to hold on to state houses across the country, and even city councils and school boards. Pro-life people have to be active in all those arenas to hold on to the mechanisms of power and lawmaking and policy shaping. We try in, in academic institutions to hold on to centers of influence in those institutions. We try to hold on in some way to media outlets. We try to hold on even to churches. It sounds strange, but so many religious institutions have fallen under the control of pro-abortion forces. But brothers and sisters, with this 40 Days campaign, we are holding on to something else that is fully within our grasp and that this movement will succeed only if we keep it within our grasp. We hold on to the sidewalks. Our media is the streets. We come out here as Americans, knowing what the First Amendment means, knowing that whatever else we do or don't have control of but to be able to reach the public, knowing that no matter how much money we have or don't have, we have these sidewalks. They belong to us. And we need to use them with greater skill than ever before, in greater numbers than ever before, with greater perseverance than ever before, because when we come out here, we always win. We prick the consciences of the abortion industry. We take away the despair of the men and women who are going here. We save the lives and we awaken the community. 
All those going by, they know why we're here. All those going by, if they're pro-life, encouraged to see that they are not alone, if they are pro-abortion, knowing that we're not going away. We always win when we come out here, and we win because we encourage one another. We inspire one another. We build up the strength of one another, knowing that, in fact, this movement is on the path to victory. So thank you for what you're doing, for being here today, for the ongoing prayer, the penance, the activism, the community outreach, and uh, it, is a, uh, it is a constant inspiration uh, for me. I know David says the same uh, all the time in going around to the different sites and just seeing you, that we know you're here. It's one thing uh, to know, it's another thing to see uh, and to share the encouragement that we all have in Jesus Christ. Thank <laughs> you.